Welcome to Surfing the Winds of Change, a presentation on one of the many key aspects of leadership and team effectiveness by nationally recognized leadership consultant, coach, speaker, and the author of the highly acclaimed book, The Navigator's Handbook, 101 Leadership Lessons for Work and Life. And now, here's David O'Brien. It's nice to see so many familiar faces. As I thought back uh, to our conference last year, as some of you recall, uh, I couldn't help but realize what a great experience that was. Frankly, it was one of, one of my favorite projects last year where we got together and we, I did the presentation on the evolution of leadership. Thank you. And as I was thinking about today's presentation, as I mentioned to a few of you before we got started, it's been a work in progress. We'll be talking about the work that I did with your board back on July 2nd, that really in many ways set the foundation for today's program. What are these universal obstacles that I encounter in my work all over the country in working with teams and leaders around this issue of change? And that first kind of mistake or obstacle is that there's a tendency for people to think that change won't affect me. I won't have to change, it's somebody else. And the second really big obstacle or mistake that people make when it comes to dealing with change, and I will stand up and be counted and say I have made this mistake too, and that is that change is only negative. Change can never be good. Change must be bad. If we just hold on to the past, if we cling to the past, will return to the way things used to be. Well, I think it's fair to say that we all know that's not the truth. And so as I set the course for today, I'd like you to be thinking about how do we as leaders, because as I look out across this large group of people, I'm really struck by the fact that one of the many things that we share, one of the many common denominators that we have as a group and again, I'm so thankful to be part of this group, is that we are all leaders. The next part and final part is really to create a framework for action. What does that really mean? It's my hope that each of you will get one thing out of my presentation. Maybe there's two, that would be a bonus. But if you can get one thing and apply it, that to me is the real value of our time together. It's not, me, it's, just, it's not just a case of me investing the time to be well prepared for today or making an hour and 10 minute commute to be here. It's a lot about the investment that each of you are making. I look out that window and I'm compelled to think about what a magnificent day it is and the ocean is right behind me and you're in here. So I'm going to do my very best to make that a good experience for you. <laughs> to that point of, of commitment to action and moving forward, it's my hope that each of you can take that one lesson or discovery or gem that you discovered or found in this process, in this program this morning, and apply it. That's the real test. Let's look at the, the change reality and leadership opportunity. This is based on national research. This, has been, this is really about conventional thinking around organizational change that's been supported by broad research around the country from a number of different organizations. But this gives you a good framework to build on. It says in most organizations today that are going, undergoing change, and what organization today is not undergoing change, you will have somewhere around 30% of the people in that group, in your population, will be change disciples. They'll be on board with it. They're what I like to refer to as the navigators. Joe mentioned the title of my book, The Navigator's Handbook, 101 Leadership Lessons for Work and Life. Navigating is a theme that connects to that. And I, again, I'll tell you more about that later, a little bit more about that later. 50% will be on the fence. 50% of your team will likely be on the fence, and the rest will find it very hard to change. In fact, more than likely, they won't change. Maybe they'll put on a good game face and play along with it, but you're not gonna convert them. They're not gonna get fully on board and on the bus, as I refer to it. But why do I have the word opportunity at the head of this slide? It's really because therein lies in that 50% 
lies the leadership opportunity for you to get the majority of your team on the bus moving in the right direction. Now, I have had this conversation about this slide with dozens and dozens and dozens of leaders all over the country. I have read a lot about this formula. And the thing that comes back again and again as also kind of conventional thinking around this dynamic is that the one and most powerful mechanism for getting that 50% of the population off the fence and on the bus, so to speak, is leadership, your leadership. True leaders are dispensers of hope. True leaders are dispensers of hope. Guess what? And this isn't going to surprise you, but I'll remind you, your team, the people that make you successful, by the way, that's a framework of leadership that's really important. I'm not successful without my team. I can't do it. I've worked with some brilliant people over the years, and I can tell you that while they may be very smart and may have gone to great schools and may have extremely impressive educational credentials, a good number of them that I've worked with are very quick to tell you that it's not them, it's their team. And so here's the, here's the reminder, your team, the people that make you successful, guess what? They're hungry for hope. They are hungry for that. Because you know what? Just like every one of you understands that there's, times are changing and your role is different today than it was six months ago or a year ago or five years ago, and at some level, all of us are maybe a little bit frightened because it's changing and people are taking parts of our job away or responsibilities away or technology is changing the value that we bring to the equation. The reality is that hope that you bring to it that optimism that you bring to it that says, we'll be okay, we'll figure it out, goes a tremendously long way in getting those people off the fence. All of these represent things that you can do. Also, you know, I think they're all really good, but going back with a good attitude, you know, whenever I do my leadership training, I ask, the only commitment I ask of the participants is that they go back to their work area and tell one person about their experience. And if you can go back and tell one person about this whole conference and how it impacts them, that's leadership and that's a very positive piece of it. What I was trying to do as I built the program was think about what are the universal lessons that I know about change and leadership uh, these are reflected in the book, too, by the way. But I, I talked about the universal challenges, or obstacles, or mistakes that people make. And so I drew from what I thought would be very appropriate for our conversation today from my book. And the first one, I think, is really, really an important thing. It's, it's a good foundation for leaders to remember. Everybody goes through that change transition curve in their own way and in their own time. You know, we talked about, I, I had you imagine the, the circle or the, the curve rather representing time and there was denial and resistance and, and um, disengaged and then committed. And so everybody goes through that in their own time. There's no formula. There's, as long as I've been doing this work and been around this work and have been part of mergers and acquisitions in my career, I've come to realize that everybody goes through it in their own way. Some people need more help than others. Celebrating small successes, building momentum. I talk about it in the context of building momentum. <laughs> building momentum and creating little wins. You know, one of the ideas of that, what can you do in seven days, is to make something doable. That's a win, that's, a, that's building momentum. Some people need more help than others. Holding everybody uh, accountable is really part of what great leaders consistently do. You have people on the fence, you have people that are engaged, you have people that are digging their heels in and pushing back. Holding everybody accountable for some part of the change is really, really part of what leaders do. It's an important part of it. And I think while all of those are important, the next one, and I think the, most, the last one that I'll mention from there, is clear and consistent communication from you 
is a critical part of it. Because absent clear and, consider, clear and consistent information from you, they make it up. It's called the rumor mill. And the truth of the matter is the rumor mill is never positive. I'm going to tell you about the cartoon that I was going to open with. It's a picture of a recent college graduate who goes to see a fortune teller to ask her how will his life turn out. And he says, I, she says, I have good news and bad news. So he said, well, why don't you give me the bad news first? To which she says, well, you are going to be poor and miserable all of your life. So he said, well, what, what's the good news? And she says, well, by age 40, you'll be used to it. <laughs> now, here, here's the correlation to change, okay? Here's the correlation to change. Get used to it, okay? It's really, really important. And the other reality is it's not going to slow anytime soon. Thank you for having me. I've had a wonderful time. To learn more about the full scope of David's work in helping leaders and teams to be more effective, or to arrange for David to speak at your next event, please contact him directly at 860-242-1070. And be sure to visit David online at workchoicesolutions.com, where you can also order a copy of The Navigator's Handbook, 101 Leadership Lessons for Work and Life.